boys and girls. I am glad to be back with another story from the exciting book of Acts in your Bible. So if you don't have your Bibles out yet, why don't you run and get them right now and find Acts chapter 8. That's the big number. And then we'll be looking for the little number 26 because that's where our story starts. First of all, before I read this story to you, because I want to read the story and show you the flannel graphs that go with it, because it's so fun to have a picture that shows what's happening, I want to review just a few things that have happened so far in Acts. I kind of always start way back where Jesus ascended into heaven, because that's when he told the disciples that they should go and make disciples and baptize people once they believed in him for their salvation. And so the disciples were doing that. They took that seriously, and when the Holy Spirit came and gave them power, so they were bold and courageous, they just wanted to tell everybody about Jesus and how he died for their sins. But the rulers, remember, got very angry about that because they didn't like people that would follow someone other than them. They wanted to be important. And so they started putting Christians in prison. Well, sometimes things that seem very bad God uses for a very good purpose. And that's what happened. When they started putting Christians in prison, the Christians decided, we better not stay in Jerusalem. We better go other places where we won't be put in prison. And so what really happened is they started going to other cities and other countries. And wherever they went, they told people about Jesus. And that's how the church spread. Those people told other people about Jesus. And Philip was one of the men that left Jerusalem, and he went to a place called Samaria. And he began to preach there and to tell people about Jesus. And people started believing in Jesus, and it was wonderful. But then, I'm going to start reading from Acts chapter 8, verse 26, what happened while he was in Samaria. It says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he got directions from an angel on a new place to go. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian man who was an important official in charge of the treasury for the queen of Ethiopia. So that's someone that's in charge of a lot of money, and that's a very important job. So this man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home, he was sitting in the chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. And the Spirit of God said to Philip, Go to that chariot and stay next to it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and he heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I unless someone explains it to me? He said. So the Ethiopian invited Philip to come up in the chariot and sit with him. And this is the passage of scripture that the, the Ethiopian was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. And then the man said to Philip, Tell me, please, who is this prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Philip was very excited because this was an opportunity where someone who didn't know about Jesus was asking him a question, and he got to explain what the scriptures were saying. Verse 35 says, Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the man said, Look, here's some water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the Ethiopian went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the man didn't see him again, but he went on his way rejoicing. So, from this story, there are some things that we can learn. One thing is that when we hear God telling us something, 
whether we've read it in the Bible or we just hear it in our hearts, because we can tell when God is telling us something that we should do, then we don't have to ask questions. We can just obey, because we know God tells us true things and the things that we should do. And another thing is that a missionary is just a person who tells somebody else about Jesus. And in this story, Philip was a missionary. He went to Samaria and told people there about Jesus, and they believed in him. And then he went down and he told this one man from Ethiopia, which is a country in Africa. That was far away. He told him about Jesus, and that man believed. And then what happened? Hmm. That man went and told the queen and other people in his country, and that's how news about Jesus spreads. And that's what missionaries are. They're people, whether they go to another country or another city, or even if they stay in the city where they live now, they just want to tell people about Jesus. And do you know that our church supports some missionaries that are in lots of places around the world, and when we support them by giving them money, they can go and do the work in other countries or with other people that we might never have a chance to talk to. And this map shows a picture where we can see in many different places in the world people that we know from our church are teaching about Jesus. Now we can listen to God's voice too. And when he tells us to obey him, maybe he'll be telling you Tell your friend about Jesus. Tell your aunt about Jesus. Tell your next door neighbor about Jesus. Or maybe someday, when you get older, he will say, would you go to a different country and be a missionary and tell people about Jesus for me? And that's a very exciting thought. But we don't have to wait till we're older. Remember, we can be missionaries even now. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we are so thankful that you died for our sins and that you love us and that we can ask you for forgiveness and ask you to live in our hearts and help us to be excited and happy to share with other people that might not know about you that you died for them too and they can ask you to forgive their sins and that they can live with you in heaven when they die. Thank you so much and thank you for all of these children and I pray that you would be with them every day and help them to be able to hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us again, and I hope you have a fun time with your craft today. See you later. Bye. Good morning, everybody. This is Miss Karen. I you probably haven't seen me in a long time, and I haven't seen you, and I can't wait to see you all again. We have a wonderful craft for today. You need to get out your glue stick or just Elmer's glue, and we will start. This is what it is going to look like. And it says, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. So, you should probably get a bowl or a, or a container where you can keep your, your little um, trinkets in here, these little gems. And then we can start working on it. So the first thing you should do after you've finished, you should go around and take glue. And you're going to go around here here and here and then you're gonna and I know some of the girls might want to put more gems than others so have some fun with it and then once you've got your blue dots on and you just keep going around and you can put as many of your gems as you want there's some little flowers here and, and uh, really pretty colors and you think you've done as much decorating as you want to, then put the rest of the stuff back in the bag because I 
sure mom and dad don't want to have them all over the house. And um, wait for the glue to dry, and then you can hang it up. Bye. I hope to see you guys soon. I've missed you a lot.